everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new uh, on my channel, welcome. And uh, you can hit the subscribe button and stay updated on new videos. We are going through the book of James together and we're pretty much taking it verse by verse. So we're not going real fast, but we're breaking it down and it's been a lot of fun so far. So I hope that uh, those of you who've been joining us on this study, I hope that you've been learning a lot. And um, I, I want to hear your thoughts as you're going through this with us. So we're going to get started on James chapter 1 verse 21. Okay, so let's go ahead and read together, and we're going to start at James chapter 1, verses 19, and we're going to go through 21, but we're only, only going to discuss uh, verse 21. Okay, here we go. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Okay, that's what we read last week. 21. Therefore... Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Okay, now did you catch that? He said, get rid of all moral filth and evil, right? <laughs> all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent. Okay, first of all, Let's not forget that this guy is talking to Christians, right? He's talking to believers, to people who are Christ followers, and yet he's telling them, get rid of all moral filth in your lives, all of the evil that is so prevalent in your lives, okay? I think we sort of have this, this idea when we become a Christian, like, okay, we're suddenly supposed to be like super duper transformed, like just completely different person. And yes, we are transformed. The word says that we are a new creation in Christ, but we are also still in the process of being transformed as well. It is a process. And so those are old habits, the old stuff that we used to deal with in our former lives, right? We That still stuff has to die, right? Those old habits, they have to die. And that's a part of that process. Those things are not easy to, to get rid of, but the Word tells us that we have to get rid of all moral filth. So where it says, get rid of, right? Well, I looked in there, uh, in my Greek interlinear, and it said, it actually translated the word first. Okay, well, the Greek word is, I'm gonna pop it up right here for you, okay. So this is the word that it has. Well, it's translated in my Greek linear, uh, interlinear as put away, okay. So the definition for this word could be to lay down. It could be um, cast off right? Which I think is really interesting too. I mean, again, Jesus said, you must deny yourself. You must, you must lay down all of that stuff that was a part of your former life, as a part of that junk that's still there, part of that sinful nature, right? You must lay that stuff down. But also I think about casting off, just that definition of it too, to cast off something. I think about the things of um, of being almost like like we're in bondage, like we're a slave to something, right? Like a prison. And I think that definitely that uh, there's a lot of stuff of, of old habits or old things that people would say, or just, just sinful things that, that we struggle with. A lot of people would say that they feel very much in bondage to those things. And, um, and so to cast those off would be, to me, I envision like casting off chains, right? Casting off that stuff. So yes, it is moral filth. Yes, it is sin, but it is also something that holds us, that it keeps us in bondage. And we don't have to be in bondage to those things anymore. They don't have to be chains around, around our necks anymore. We can cast that off. And then it goes on to say, uh, and then the evil that is so prevalent, okay? The evil that is so prevalent. Now, the word that I looked up um, for the Greek for prevalent here 
is um, is this word, and <laughs> uh, I'm not even gonna try to say these words because I screw them up every, every time. But anyways, uh, that is the Greek word for it, and the definition that it actually gave, or how it was translated in my Greek interlinear anyway, was uh, was rampant, and you may have a different word in your version as well. Now, here's one of the definitions that I thought was, was pretty good. Okay, abundance. So to have an abundance of something, it's not just to like have enough of it, like just enough evil in your life. You have like an abundance. You have like an overflow of evil. Again, talking to believers here, talking to Christians that they don't just have like a little bit of evil, <laughs> right? Like a little bit of bad, a little bit of something that they shouldn't have. No, it's like an abundance. It's overflowing in their lives. And so I thought that was really interesting. Again, talking to believers, talking to Christian people here. So it says, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Now the Greek word for accept, which I'm using the NIV, so it has accept. You may have a different word in your version. Um, but the Greek word that uh, when I was looking that up was this, and it actually was translated as receive in, in my Greek interlinear. And then some of the definitions that they used for this, this Greek word here was um, to accept, to take, or to take up. And I thought that was really interesting too, because if we're to humbly accept the word planted in you, planted in us, we not just go, okay, yeah, I believe it. I believe the word of God. I believe it. But I actually, not even just take it, but I, but to take it up. And that's what it says, one of the definitions of to take it up, to take hold of it, like to actually do something with it, right? Not to, not just to just go, yeah, I believe it, but like, yes, I believe it. Like it is when something is planted inside of you, right? It is planted in me. Um, I know some versions say implanted. So if something is implanted in you, it is something that God is putting, he's putting his word in your heart. He is stamping it on you. He is making it a part of your nature. I mean, that is a new nature. That is because of Christ. That is Christ's nature. And so we have to to know that we're we're not just we're not just believers of his word in just our mouth, with our mouth or just with our minds. We are believers of his word because we actually do what the word of God says because we not we don't just say oh yeah, I believe the gospel, but I act on the gospel. I actually am doing what it says. I'm acting it out in my life. I am letting it completely and totally take over um, and transform my life. And then it says, it's able to save you, right? Now, some versions say able to save your soul. And I think most versions do say that. I don't know why the NIV didn't say that. That's how I've always read it in the past. And that is how I saw it in the Greek as well. They did use the word soul there. And um, and so the word for save though, and this is the Greek word here that you can, uh, you can see, the word save, and of course they did translate that as save as well. But some of the definitions that they used there was, this is interesting, was to heal or make whole um, or to keep you safe from maybe like going down a destructive path. I thought that that was really good because um, I think, you know, a lot of times we we think of, you know, it's able to save your soul as in like an eternal sense. But the truth is the word of God is full of some practical information. It is full of wisdom. It is full of not just for our eternal state, right? For heaven or hell, like where we're going in the end um, when we die or hopefully if the rapture comes and takes us because that's my preference. But also just for the here and now for why why we are while we are on this earth right while we're walking through these these seasons of life that let's be honest can be really challenging um, that he is his word is, is able to save 
us, is able to save our soul, save us from some very difficult situations because it is full of life, it is full of light, it is full of truth. And in moments where we just don't know what to do or maybe we're about to do the wrong thing, um, His truth shines through. And so that's why it is so important and I encourage everyone, like I know I probably drive people completely crazy because I'm always encouraging people like study God's word, study God's word, study God's word because it really is. And when you need it most, right? Um, you'll, it's his word will just pop up in your mind and uh, you'll be like, yeah, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do because you've been soaking in his word. You've been studying it and reading it. So anyways, I know, tangent. <laughs> so study God's word, right? So, hey, I would love to hear your thoughts on uh, on this verse. I know it was only one and we are gonna jump into a few more next week. We're gonna try to do more than one, but I thought this was an amazing verse and really just to tackle this one verse because it really is full of um, some really powerful stuff. And um, so is there something that you're struggling with right now? I mean, you don't have to be real specific if you're not comfortable with that or whatever, but I mean, I'd love to hear your stories if you are comfortable sharing um, of some things that, you know, maybe maybe you're still dealing with from um, maybe before you became a Christian. I mean, I know for me, I've been a Christian since I was really young, and so well, most of my adult life, I've known the Lord, but listen, I have walked through some junk, and I have made some big mistakes, and, um, and so even as a believer, I know what it's like to really screw up and um, and to do things in a way that I shouldn't. I know what it's like to walk away from the Lord and um, and to just kind of do my own thing. And so I know what it's like to sort of be that prodigal prodigal daughter, you know, the prodigal son um, who returns. And um, and so hey, don't be afraid to share those those things on here because um, I have have had to have a lot of grace and mercy in my life, and I still do every single day. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Love to hear your stories. And um, you can, of course, comment below. Again, if this is your first time joining us, I'd love for you to hit subscribe, or maybe you've been checking out the channel for a little while and you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay updated on new videos, which um, I try to do as frequently as possible and trying to get back on it. I haven't actually recorded a video in three weeks, and so I'm so mad at myself. But we're doing it, okay. Um, so we got a lot of new stuff coming out and we are working on some new cover songs as well. So um, anyways, I will talk to you guys again soon where we're gonna go uh, and finish up the book of James. Okay, talk to you later, bye.